السلام عليكم ورحمة الله ولكن <تصفيق> اتق ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجال كثير ونساء اتق الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان لكم رقيبا يا الذين امنوا اتق الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد ان استك حديث كتاب الله عز وجل واحسن هدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر امور محدوثاتها وكل ما حدث في الاسلام بدع وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار او بريز اند ثانكس دو تو الله سبحانه وتعالى 
We praise him and we extol him. We send the final salutation of Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Very little most truthful sort of speech is the book of Allah, the Quran of Majid, and the finest guidance that of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the most evil of affairs are the newly invented ones, bid'a, innovation in Islam. And every bid'a in Islam is a going astray. Today, bidin Allah, by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the fadl and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I would like to speak about some of the obstacles on our path to success. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lies our success. Those of us who were in attendance last week, I mentioned that life is all about choice. And as believers, we understand that we are on a path in our lives and we feel that the path is set and we know what we want. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of his mercy, he puts us on different ways, different paths. So we have to understand as believers, as people of iman and faith in the qada wa qadr, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has preordained things before we came into existence. And at the end of the day, as people of Iman who believe in these things are articles of faith that are Iman in Allah's pre-decree is a part of our faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our Iman, which means that we strive and we make every effort to do what is correct and to do what is right. And we know with certainty as people of Iman, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always decree that which is best for us. And we understand as people of Iman that there are many obstacles in life. There are many hurdles in life. And there are several paths to take in life. And ideally, as human beings, we usually, in the majority of the time, envision success. And we're talking about obstacles and success. Obstacles on our path to success. The majority of us envision success as becoming wealthy, having a lot of possessions. But Allah musta'an al matasifun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he knows best. Those who are deemed successful and those who are deemed wretched in this life. Things are not always as it seems on the outside. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what we do not know. And what things seem to be are not the way it looks on the outside. So I want us to understand now, before it's too late, that worldly possessions are not an indication that a person is successful in this life. Before it's too late, we need to understand with clarity what the real law of attraction is. It's not like what those or these new age philosophers claim or coin as the law of attraction. As people of Iman, we need to realize and grasp now before it's too late that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had already coined for us what the real law of attraction is in his book and in the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah says clearly, Inna lil mutaqina mafazan. Al-ayah. That the people of taqwa, the people who have that wara, who are cautious about how they're living, they have already succeeded. Those are the people of success. So when we see an individual having a lot, that is not an indication that a person is successful. The people of wara, dignity, who are cautious and care about how they live their life according to Islam, they have already succeeded. So with that said, my dear brother, regards to the 
obstacles along our path to success. Many of us, but overwhelming majority of us, will blame external circumstances as to why or why not they are being successful or why they are not succeeding in their lives. But believe it or not, the majority of the obstacles on our path to success are something, are things that lie within us, that lie and reside deep down within each and every one of us that we need to come to grips with now, sooner before it's too late. That the success and failure is a thing that lies within us in something which has been called a shahawat, our desires, and a shubahat, the doubts that we have in regards to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the doubts in which we have for Allah's promise for us when we try to stay within the parameters of the deen. Many of us, we like to blame external forces. But lo and behold, the sickness, the marad, and the ilaj, the cure, lies within us. When we come to grips with ourselves and accept that we have the success remedy, we have the success uh, properties within us. Alhamdulillah, I mean, most of us are anxious and we suffer from anxiety. Why? Because in our lives, we realize that things are stemming from one of these two avenues. A shahawat, a person following their desires, and a shubhat, the doubts that we have in regards to the promise of Allah. So when we start to fall into these, one of these two things, one which always leads to the other, then we see that as a result, we are spiraling down into a sequences of events that could have been, that we could have never have foreseen. But as a result of our following our desires. Why do we follow our desires? Because we have doubts. We have doubts about the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we all need to know, before it's too late, that our life is a test. But what most of us, the overwhelming majority of us, fail to understand about the tests in our lives is that we misinterpret the test. A great deal of the time, the tests that we are undergoing in our lives are consequential, which means that in nature, the tests that we are undergoing are preventable. But qadr Allah ma'shafal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does whatever he wishes and he wants. Since we chose to obey our shahawat, our desires, our lower desires. And as a result of that, we are falling into doubt and suspicion, shubhat, doubt and suspicion about Allah's promise. So, Instead, and rather than asking a person who we trust, and there is definitely a few people on this planet whom we can confide in about those unrestrained desires which has led to our doubt about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, believers, we have to look within ourselves and see that we need to find someone who we can sit down and talk to. We need to find someone before it's too late. And we fall and we go down those sequences of events that, without a doubt, a Latif, one of the names of Allah, bin a Lutuf, a Latif, he is suitably aware of our conditions, will allow us to go down those undesirable roads because we followed our desires. 
which led us to doubt and suspicion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah Latif will allow us by his qadr and his gentleness to go down that road of perdition and shame, humiliation. Why? Because we didn't want to take stock of ourselves. We didn't want to wait and find out we are too proud, we are too boastful. And the list goes on and on and on and on. But what happens when we, as people of Iman, realize and we take stock of ourselves and we take stock of those unrestrained desires is when success starts to settle in to our realm, into our environment, into our homes. So we have to understand that we must exercise self-restraint. That is the success formula. Because right now, in this day and age that we're living in, there are so many different forms of fitna. We have the fitna of social media. We have the fitna of online shopping. We have the fitna of wanting and needing the latest gadgets. And without realizing the driving force behind all of these is our incested love of wealth. We love wealth. We love money. Most of the disobedience that takes place is a result of our insistent and excessive love of money. But we'll deny it and say, no, I don't like money. I don't love money. But the Prophet Sallallahu spoke the truth. So the Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi this hadith is in Sahun of Imam Turmidhi and the word of Ka'b ibn Iyad. That the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has stated, "Inna li kulli ummatin fitnatin, wa fitnat al ummati al mal." Ochah Muqaas Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That every nation has a fitna, and the fitna of my nation is money. We have to understand that, my dear Sallam and Iman that we have a problem. And the more that we try and live in doubt and suspicion, the problems will never be lifted from us. With this in mind, we need to understand that we all love wealth, but we have to understand the asma wal husna, the 99 names of Allah and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that one of his names, or from his well-known names, is a basit, a razit, the one who gives, the one who provides without stint. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said about himself in Surah Saba, verse number 36. Say, O Muhammad, to mankind, verily, my Lord expands the provisions to whomsoever he wishes and desires. Walakin, the problem with most of mankind is that they are yet to realize this. This is the problem, meaning that Allah, a basit, a raziq, the one who gives without stint, without measurement, in a razak who gives and provides the quwwat in matin with strength and authority. He gives to those whom he loves and those whom he hates. Ar-Razak, he gives to those whom he loves and those whom he hates. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ar-Razak, Al-Basid, he gives rizq and he makes those rich whom he wishes and he causes people to be poor whom he wishes. In all of this is a great hikmah, is a great wisdom. What is the meaning of hikmah? Both are shafi mekaniha. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts things in its proper place. So we need to be intelligent enough to realize without asking ourselves or anyone else, why them and not me? La hawla wa la quota. We do not judge in accordance to what we see. Because Allah knows al-batin, al-zahir. 
that which is hidden and that which is apparent. We don't judge because the wise individual realizes now before they fall into problems that wealth, money is not our object of worship. Our object of worship is Allah, Rabbul Izzah, the Lord of Honor. We know that the blessing and contentment can only come from above, from Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ar razaq can give risk, wealth, sustenance to whomsoever he pleases. But the one who has been blessed within their wealth, with contentment in their hearts, can only come from above, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we consider wealth, over time, we'll begin to realize that wealth includes many things. Health is wealth. Happiness is wealth. Having a spacious home, having good neighbors, living in a good neighborhood, all of these things, having a good a family, having children, good children, and good friends, whether they are two or three. This is rizq. This is wealth. Just to name a few, but alhamdulillah, mashallah, tabarakallah, it's great to be a good earner, to be able to go and make money and earn wealth for your family. But since we all have a love for wealth, it is more important What's more important than being able to earn wealth is that we are thankful. We are grateful for the rizq. When we need to pray to Allah, we need to pray and ask Allah to make us thankful. We want to understand what are the obstacles on our road to success. It lies within. Some of us are blinded by our wealth. We have so much but yet we see and we deem ourselves poor, miskeen, and in need. We need to understand that if we don't ask Allah, then where are we going to get it from? We only ask people how to increase, where to invest, and how much can I expect to earn. But we never ask Allah. We never ask Allah. Allah SWT tells us in his book regarding Nuh alayhi salam, when he said to his people, "Khudu astaghfira Rabbukum inu kana ghafara, yursil asma alaykum midrara, yamdilukum bi amwal wa binin." Al-Ayah. Allah subhanahu wa taala speaks to us regarding the conversation Nuh alayhi salam had with his people. Nuh alayhi salam said, "Ask forgiveness of your Lord, for verily He is the forgiver, ghafara. He loves to forgive." As a result of us asking for forgiveness, then he will send upon us rain in abundance, midrara, and he will give us an increase in wealth and in children. This is why, my dear man, we need to constantly strive to be people of iman and taqwa. While we're on this subject, we need to understand and grasp whether we're young or we're old, that the majority of our problems lie within. Because in our haste for this dunya, we forget that our enemy, the shaitan, he's watching us from angles that we do not perceive. He's watching us, and he's looking, and he's waiting for the moment where he can attack. We have to understand that. If we are so weak-minded that we don't understand that in our haste for acquiring and accumulating wealth that with our struggle against the allurements of this world that the shaitan is waiting for an opening a tint an opening in the armor where he can attack and this battle is has been taking place since the beginning of time Allah tells us over and over again 
إِنَّهُ لَكُمْ أَدُوٌ مُبِينٌ That he, the shaitan, is our avowed enemy. إِنَّهُ وَقَبِيلَهُ يُرَحْمِنْ هِيْتُ لَا يَرَوْنَ Him, the shaitan, and his tribe, they see us from where we see them not. So we have to understand, my dear Basalam, in Iman, that this battle against the shahawat, our desires, and the shubahat, the doubts that the shaitan puts into our hearts, has began a long time ago. When the shaitan, he waged war against us. And the Prophet ﷺ informed us that the shaitan is not as we expect him to be. That he has a red face with a pokey beard and horns and a red tail. This is TV, Hollywood. The shaitan is flowing through the veins. Yijri, dim, Ibn Adam. This is what the Prophet said. That the devil is running through our veins. So we got money now. We feel we're better than other people. This is the reality. You may know somebody from your childhood. But now he has a little money. He or she, they have a little money. They changed. What happened to this person? He act like he don't even recognize me anymore. We've known each other since childhood. Now he's got a little money. He feels he's better than us. This is exactly what the shaitan said. This is exactly what the shaitan felt about us. The shaitan, he said, Allah says, قَالْ مَا مَنَعْكَ لَا تَسْجُدْ لِإِذْ أَمْرَتُكَ قَالْ أَنَا خَيْرَ مِنْهُ خَلَقْتَنِي مِنْ نَارٍ وَخَلَقْتَهُ مِنْ تِينٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked the shaitan, what prevented you from making sujood when I ordered you to make sujood? What the shaitan said was when he declared war against us. Ana khairan minhu. I am better than him. You created me from fire and you created him from clay. This is when the war started. This is when the war started, when the shaitan... He gave the reason for his disobedience by saying, you created me from fire. He gave the reason. The ulama of tafsir have stated that the excuse is worse than the crime itself. The excuse for why he did not sujud. All the angels, they made sujud. He said, illa iblis, abba He refused and became arrogant about himself, thought himself better than everybody else. This is what, the, this is what we need to understand, my dear man. When we feel that we are better, we're more sophisticated than other people, then that's where the sickness lies. And the only cure is when we repent and turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all. Amen. So as I said, my dear Barcelona Iman, at the beginning of the khutbah, that there are many obstacles on our path to success. But as people of Iman, as people who believe truly and sincerely in the promise of Allah, that the word of Allah is true, it's haq. So we should not be deceived. So Allah says, do not be deceived by the life of this world. Do not be deceived by the chief deceiver who wants to deceive us about Allah. We need to be thankful for whatever we have. Learn to share with whatever we have. Don't look down on other people. Know that Allah knows their situation better than us. If Allah gave us anything, we need to be thankful for that thing. If Allah didn't give other people as much as they gave as they've given to us, then at the same time, we need to be thankful. We need to stop being envious of one another. Remember, only Allah knows the circumstances of each and every one of us. The Prophet ﷺ said, Lays the ghani and kathat al-arad. Walakin the ghani, ghani it nafs. The rich person is not the one who has a lot of possessions. But the person who is rich, they have contentment in their heart. So as people of Iman, we need to stop listening to the whispers of the shaitan. And we have to understand that the shaitan and his allies, the only power they have is the power of 
suggestion. All we have to do is say, A'udhu Billahi Min Shaitan Rajim, and do the right thing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help all of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all that khina, that contentment in our heart to be appreciative of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given us. And whenever we see, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us that whenever we see a person who is suffering, who is struggling, that we be the bigger person and not look down on them unless we're trying to lift them up. Amen. In Allah, we're not going to say that. Ya ladina amen. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad. Kama salli ala Ibrahim wa ala Ibrahim. Inka hamidu majid. Allahumma barak ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad. Kama barak ala Ibrahim wa ala Ibrahim. Inka hamidu majid. Rabbana a'atina fitin hasnaka. Allahumma